Hello there and welcome back to my art table. Today what I'm going to be teaching is painting on wood, on a wood panel. And uh, I'm going to create a multiple layered painting on this wood panel. Painting on wood is a little bit different than painting on a canvas. Uh, it has a different texture and it also has a different give pattern. Uh, painting on canvas gives a little and you have to be a little more careful if you're really uh, working the paint in. Painting on wood is fantastic if you're going to do something really heavy. You can really kind of get in there and move it around and scrub and remove and do whatever because it doesn't give. Now this one is a thin sided wood panel. This is 24 by 24. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to give it a couple nice layers of gesso, just a plain white gesso. That's what I use. Um, lay that down and then we're going to put some white on it, of course. I always start with a nice layer of titanium white and uh, then we're going to lay down our layers and our paint and all those. So we're going to do them in different modules so you can watch what you want or watch the entire thing. And this is just laying down some nice thick white gesso. I use a large spatula as you can see. And I'm going to use a couple of flat brushes for this. And of course my trusty water bottle that I just kind of mist everything real lightly so I have just a little bit of water. Helps uh, mix the gesso and lay it down. I think I'm going to use a larger one. And you can get brushes like the, this. These are just utility brushes that I got from my local Home Depot or you know local hardware store. They're inexpensive. Um, they lay down large washes of paint like this very well. And also, um, you know, they're very cheap to replace when they run out. They're pretty easy to clean. And uh, you don't have to worry about, about them if they get kind of gunked up, at which they do after a while. Just buy a new one. They're not too expensive. So these are great to use. You can find a lot of things at like your hardware store. I actually get my uh, water bottles and my painting apron from Sally's Beauty Supply. <laughs> they have pretty cheap stuff there for that, so you might want to check that out. Dollar Store, of course, has you know paper plates and paper you know plastic bags for holding paint overnight. Um, plat plates for your your paint palette, stuff like that. So. You probably know all those tricks already, but they are good to know if you don't. And just laying gesso down. Now gesso is kind of gnarly to deal with because, uh, gnarly, that old word, because you have to kind of uh, really work it in and then get the brush strokes out, but it does tend to settle a little bit. And what that is, uh, what I mean by that is that if you let it sit overnight, You'll see brush strokes when you're done first painting and then you let it sit overnight and dry and they kind of settle a little bit. They kind of smooth out on their own. There will be some, so you kind of have to get them out if you can right up front, but you'll find that it settles a little bit. So, And then a couple coats of nice titanium white will smooth out anything that's left over if you want a super smooth, super smooth surface. But we're going to put layers of paint down, so I'm not really that worried about it because we're going to go over it again anyway. So this is just what I'm doing to lay it all down. I'm going to give the edges a real nice coat. And by edges, I mean the literal edges of the, uh, the board. I'll try to make you see that. Just kind of go over those. Because those are kind of rough. You should really have them smoothed out by however you get your canvas board. Um, but this is probably going to be either hung on a wire or framed, so I'm not too worried about that. So that's about it. I'm going to finish this off and we'll come back in the next section. I'll show you it dried and then we'll decide if we... Um, I might put another cut of gesso on. Of course I'm not going to film that because you'll know how to do that and then we'll get into the textures. 
and welcome back. This is the second module for uh, creating this layered textured painting on a wood panel. And what I've done is I've drawn out with just a few light lines where I want my texture lines to be. I'm going to kind of layer it that way. Uh, I've laid down a little bit of texture, two different mediums. This is the modeling paste and this is the extra heavy gel. You can see they're not that different. This one is a little more opaque. This one is a little more translucent. But I'm going to go ahead and lay some more texture down here so you can see how I did this. What I'm going to use is the modeling paste, which is a fairly light to medium modeling paste or gel. Just take it out with my palette knife and I'm going to just smooth it on. And I might actually build up one of my other layers a little bit more. This is going to be a fairly organic texture, meaning that it's not too structured or formalized except for the fact that I am putting it in a certain pattern. Um, there are artists that do a lot of formalized texture and create flowers and all different sorts of patterns with texture. I don't do that much of that, um, but this is, this is what they're using, it's a, a type of a type of medium like this anyway. So I'm getting that. I'll put some more down. Get a nice crisp line right here. And this just requires, you know, kind of playing with it a bit. It's really just like, you know, frosting a cake in a way. I actually think that I bought this palette knife at Michael's in the cake decorating section because the other palette knives I was finding were too small. I wanted a larger surface. So always, you know, you don't have to shop in the art section all the time. You can shop in other areas to find your supplies. Alright, I think I've got a good texture there where I want that. So there's really a delineation between this. This I'm going to leave flat, no texture. Then I have a texture here and then I have another texture on top of it. And I'm going to just build that up just a little bit more and then I'm going to let this dry very well. Textures need to dry, in my opinion, at least 24 hours if not longer. I like to dry, I like to let them dry, especially if they're thicker like this, for a couple of days at least. But um, you know, it's up to you. It's just you can really sort of lay things down. So I'm getting some lines here, and that just requires you know smoothing them out, moving back, and going over it. And sometimes you might like what you've what you've got. You didn't intend it, but that's what came out, and you think, "Well, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm going to keep that." So these are the textures that I have here, and then we're going to come back and we're going to lay down paint and uh, start really creating the colorful part of the painting. Hello, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to. Place on, start placing some color on our textured wood panel that we've been working on. And you can see the texture, some of the delineations here. I did take a little bit of just a taupe and scrum it right onto uh, my board here. And that's going to create our sort of underlayer. So I'll show you. I just took a little bit of taupe you could make this by just mixing uh, a little bit of gray, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, or you can use a ready mixed taupe color. And I just take it and I just, you know, kind of scrum it onto my board like this. And it doesn't really matter because we're going to go over this. But this is a little bit of an under, 
under area. And the reason that we're doing this is to create depth. So it's not just a flat white or a flat top coat color. It's going to create depth. We're going to scratch out little bits of it. So some of that taupe is going to come through from underneath. And the beautiful thing, again, about working on wood is you can really get into it with your brush. Now, if you're using high quality brushes, you don't want to do that, obviously. This is just a flat brush I got at the hardware store, inexpensive. And I go through these and use them uh, for doing these uh, flat washes and, you know, scrumming and things like that. So that's perfect with that. You can also use a sponge for that um, level. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I've got a little bit of a buff color and my glaze that I used, uh, a little bit of satin glaze, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to my palette here. And this painting is going to be a sort of really light, kind of beachy feel, so we're going to use light blue, kind of warm whites, and do a series of some glazes. So I'm just mixing this up. I don't want it to be too dark. Picking up a little bit of glaze. A little cream. Just a real creamy white is what we're going for here. And we're going to go ahead and just put that right over the top. Once that layer underneath has dried, uh, if you don't wait for it to dry, then you're just going to mix, mix it all in with your layer you put on. So you do want it to dry nicely. It's a little darker than what I want, so I'm just going to go over it with a little more white. Kind of build that up like that. And as you can see, it does come through, but we're going to build this up so that's pretty much going to be hidden in those areas. Anywhere you need to go over and hide something, that's what titanium white is perfect for. And I always have plenty of that on hand. So I'm just going to lay that down like that. And that's going to be kind of our base layer on these. We're going to, um, I'm going to put a little bit of white on this layer and then I'm going to go over it with the light a light blue glaze color. I think that's that's my plan anyway. I'm never really sure till I'm doing it. I'm just mixing titanium white, a little bit of glaze, and a little bit of the um, buff color that has different names with different brands. It's uh, you know parchment, buff, um, various antique white. There's all different kinds of whites. There's kinds of every color really. and It's just a little bit of a warm down white. Again, you can mix your own. Just put a little white down, a little gray, a little uh, brown. Mix it up. So I'm just going to go over this layer like this. Add a little more white to my palette. Again, just using a flat brush, picking up a little tinge of all these colors. You know, that's a lot why artists use palettes, is they, they do mixing right on the palette to develop those colors that really you can't find anywhere. <laughs> they are unique colors, unique to the painting. Sometimes people order commissions and, uh, you know, they, they want something to look exactly like what I created. And the hard thing is, is coming up with those colors again because it might have been something I just mixed up that day on the palette and I'm not really sure what I used. I have to kind of go back and reverse engineer it, if you will, and dissect exactly what I might have used to, to get that color. All right, so we've got a nice base here with some beige 
beige taupey color. It's just a very warm color and it, the reason I use this is because I want to sort of evoke a, a beach feeling and this is going to be kind of like the sand of that. And um, then sometimes I'll just take a, like a palette knife, scratch some of it out a little bit just to create a little bit of a texture look without actual texture and it, it will bring up a little bit of that depth from the underneath layer. And I'll put that up here as well. So if you're new to painting, uh, this is you're learning what some of these tools you know do and can do and can be used for. Some of them it's a little off label as they call it, but uh, it works. You can use a plastic knife or whatever you need to if you don't want to really invest in some of this stuff. Sometimes I'll take some paper towel and just kind of dab it and see, you know, if I don't want too much paint on something and I want to go over it, but I want to create a unique underlayer, this is, and these are some of my really high tech <laughs> techniques that I'm using. Okay, so you can kind of see. I'll turn it around what we've got here that we're working with. Can you come in a little close and see just some of the, the textured here and here just to kind of see where we're at with this. And then the next layer we're going to go ahead and lay down um, some of our other colors. <laughs> 